Yo, what's up? It's Leland, Toga. I'm making a uh, quick little video on how to uh, do shit in After Effects. I've been told to, uh, you know, show the ins and outs, you know, transitions, time warping, twister, all that stuff. So I'm gonna show you how I do stuff, uh, how I think you should do stuff, you know, what's the easiest way to do things, your files and stuff. So uh, let's get started. So basically, what we wanna do, just wanna open up a new file project and let's pop up you want to pop up a new composition make it however long the song is usually your songs like you know somewhere like two minutes that's usually what i throw my composition as and uh what you're gonna want to do is drag a clip in so just drag that in and what you're gonna want to do i always have my composition at 1440p um I always keep it at 1440 because <coughs> I feel like that's the best uh, whatever, to have it at in here. I always keep like keep my videos 1440 or 4K, but for the normal composition, I just keep it 1440. And do just transform, fit it to comp, you got it right there. And so what you do is pull in a song. Alright, so let's use this song. This is an old song I used a long time ago. Uh, but I'm just going to use it because the beats are very easy to sync down. And so basically how I sync it, <clears throat> you just got to do that. You click B just to put the uh, first marker. And that like starts the, uh, or, like the preview, the RAM preview window. Put it there and then I just click N at the end of it. And that puts it at the end of the uh, RAM preview of the song. And then uh, what you want to do is you always want to have like a backing layer. A, uh, a solid in the back and that's CTRLY and that'll pop up this and then I just usually put background. You just gotta make sure that it's black so you know you don't want to have like a pink background you know what I mean? So just have that in the background just drag it all the way to the bottom if you don't have that there sometimes you know the render doesn't work properly and it just messed everything up so um, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna single out the song and the background so that it only previews the song, so it's quicker for me to just sync the beats and stuff. So put that there, and then. Okay, like I was in front of both. You know, like a four eyes, the same test. Which one would you be both? It's very just because I don't know if that's the range of the code. So I got the beats there, and then. Just zoom in a little bit. That might be a little bit off. You can easily check the. Yeah, uh, waveform and see if they're on or not. So that was on. That was fine. That's fine here. So just gotta un. You just gotta take those off and then just sync the clip here. So what you wanna do is you just wanna put the shot right in that first marker and then there. And then to cut things as well, it's CTRL shift key. So, Okay. You just gotta make sure that you have the layer click because if you just do CTRL Shift D, it cuts everything. So, so let's just preview this little part. Okay, so here we're gonna wanna time remap this. I use time remap, other people use other things, some people use Twixter, Crash, some people use Velocity, whatever. I use time remap. And <coughs> this, what you wanna do is you wanna put the first marker there on the shot. Then we're at the beginning of the clip, put another marker just so everything stays intact. And at the end, I always put it on. Just for the beginning, just so I don't mess it up or anything. And then what you do, what I usually do, is I pull the beginning a little bit to the right. So basically, if you pull the clip closer to the like, alright, so if you're gonna pull this that way, you're gonna make the clip slower. So I think that's how it is normal. If you pull it a little bit to the right, it makes the clip a little bit slower. If you pull it to the left, it's gonna make it a lot faster. So what we wanna do here is make the clip a little bit slower in the beginning and then when he hits the shot we want it to like you know slow down real, real, uh, real fast so we pull this a bunch to the left like 30 seconds or, or 30 milliseconds and let's just maybe that and it should be a little bit slow in the beginning and then slows down real 
saw in the end. So now I got that sort of synced up, basically here. That's how you do the time remapping. And if you wanted to make make it faster, let's say like uh, on this last part here, you wanted to make it like uh, fast. You know, going into the next clip, maybe you wanted to do like a transition into it. You just pull that a little bit more to the right, and then that'll make it a little bit quicker on that side. Maybe you want to do like a cool transition on this with that being quick. You could do that or something. Uh, but that's about it for the time remapping. I don't think there's much else to uh, say with that. Uh, so next, um, I guess next we can do like transitions, I guess. Um, usually for me, I have a lot of my transitions. Um, I usually save the preset and then I just mess with the preset. Uh, like I'll just add a lot of other stuff onto it. Oh, just mess with the preset, make it longer, make it shorter, just mess with the details on it. Uh, but basically, if I wanted to do like a transition into the next one, uh, uh, what you want to do is you want to pick a CTRL, Alt Y, and that'll make you an adjustment layer. And so that basically allows you to put effects on the clip. You can put it on the actual clip itself, but I find this a lot easier and it keeps it a lot neater. A lot more poetic justice. So, I told you that a flower blooms in the dark room with the truth. Is my offset. Okay. And that's what I do here. Pull these. See, I, I need this in COD. So, I have like COD presets. For the. So, so what I'm gonna do is keep the Y at 720 if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, keep the Y at 720. And then keep this Y at 12, um, 720 as well. And then, basically, like that's your starting point, so it would start here, but I wanna start it like with it actually straight up on the clip. So 720 by 1280, that's like the normal resolution you wanted to keep it at. And then you'd put like other resolution over here at, I don't know, maybe. Uh, let me just put another clip on here just so it's um, easier to di digest, I guess. So basically the effect would happen with offset working as this and it would start here in the normal frame and then it would kind of slide the frame to the right basically and you want to keep this at, a, at an x that make, like, makes sense so where it's like where it's actually the full frame on the screen so like that about I think it's 3840 is the correct. Yeah. So it ended up like that. So it started out like this, and then it would just cut to the right and do a quick little transition. I also have blur and CCY time on it as well. Um, you can kind of mess with that, I guess. I, I like to have like a blur on all my transitions just so it looks a little bit neater. But, you know. You know how it goes. So let's uh, let's preview that real quick. So it's pretty cool like that. Obviously I'd add a little more to it. When it comes down to it, maybe I'd put like an overlay that would transition it up into the next clip. Alright, so basically, for my effects and stuff, um, 
Um, I usually keep it pretty simple and I usually stick to uh, pretty basic stuff and then I kind of just put like cool overlays and stuff and put effects on that. That's usually what I do. Uh, so I'll kind of explain how you go about doing that. So basically, make a new adjustment layer because that adjustment layer you don't really want to do. I, I try to keep my adjustment layers separate. So, uh, a bit so basically, again, I have a preset of all my stuff because it's just annoying to do everything again and again and again. Basically, what I do um, is I just put these. Um, I got some ECC lens blur, some transform, brightness and contrast, and some flicker. And what you're gonna want to do for this, for the uh, transform, you're gonna want to keep it around like maybe 104, 105, 106 tops. Uh, and then what I usually do to transition it really well into the next clip is I put the uh, the normal resolution 100 uh, right when the next clip starts so it's just real smooth just drops into the next clip sometimes I put like maybe some, maybe some like black and white filter on it so that I'm there past the 100 zero Uh, it's kind of like a trippy song, so maybe I'd add some like RGB on it, make it look a little bit cool. But as for the blurs on it, I just have the PC lens blur at five, and it cuts down to zero over here. Flicker, I put it at 0.2, and cut it down to zero over here. And the brightness and contrast, you kind of just have to play with it. I have it at default by 75, because that's like what I feel is like usually a decent point to put it on. But it's kind of up to you. And basically, for all these presets and stuff or effects, you obviously have to get those. Um, I think you can get them like if you just search up whatever you see lens blur on YouTube. You can find a ton of videos on how to get it, or BCC plugins, or Sapphire plugins, all that stuff. It's definitely super easy to get by just a quick Google search or YouTube search. So, right, so usually I put like a cool little GIF or maybe like an overlay over it to kind of mess with it a bit. So basically what I do is I just fit the comp, you know, right click, transform, fit the comp, and then uh, I put like some sort of uh, layer on it and then there's a modes over here and you can just you know, put like maybe some exclusion or subtract, divide, whatever you need to put on but just put exclusion for the time being and then uh, I'm just going to make the layer a little bit longer so I'm just going to stretch it out to maybe 150. It just makes the length of the clip a little bit longer. 160. I just want it to be the whole duration. I'm going to opacity it in. So basically how you do that, you click T on your keyboard, and that'll bring up your opacity. So start at zero, and maybe pick it up to like 100 over here. And maybe you want to put like an effect on it or something. Use That's usually what I do to make the, um, to make the overlay look different, because I use a lot of the same overlays most of the time. But I just kind of put a ton of shit on them to make them look a little bit different than the than the next you know what i mean so maybe i put some vhs on it that actually looks pretty cool maybe throw some on it maybe that'll look cool like nine. and so i'm gonna put some rgb split on this basically it's just time warp rb rgb and you just shift the frames a little bit so Right here it's at zero, and then I put the top one at three, bottom one at negative three, so it kind of makes that little look to it. So if I were to change it up a little bit, look like that, or you know. And then I have that effect that cuts into this, so it's kind of trippy, looks pretty cool. Basically what I do, I put RCB on it, I put blur map 0.2, I put motion sensitivity at 25. Um, it makes it look pretty, well, with a little bit of a, you know, blur effect to it but not much people just kind of slather it on there they just like bust it to the roof with uh rsmb and it looks like shit so i don't do that 
I put 0.2 and 25 on the bottom sensitivity. And when it comes down to color corrections and that type of stuff, I don't really mess with it at all, really. Uh, on all my videos, I usually keep it pretty bare minimum. Maybe I add some levels, but I like to keep the game looking as fresh as possible. Uh, I like to keep it as like simple, you know, I, I want to keep it bare minimum when it comes to those things. So I want it to at least still feel like Fortnite in a sense, because I feel like people just you know, throw on uh, CCs and it makes it just look bad in my opinion. So what I do, put some levels on there, maybe bust that like that, put it all like that, that's it there. Maybe I'll do some levels like that, make it a little bit darker or something, or maybe I'll put, as an example, uh, this is the color correction I put on Faria's video. Uh, basically, I just put some curves, mess with them a bit. Um, so you kind of mess with these a little bit and it makes it look a little bit more blue or less blue. I kind of wanted to make the edit feel a little bit like uh, purpley because it's uh, MGMT, so yeah. They have like a trippy vibe to them, so I like that color. And also, I put hue saturation bright, and I was just messing with the hue shift. Um, you don't have to, but I think it actually looks pretty cool when you mess with it a bit. It makes the game look a little bit, you know, different, which is cool. But I like to keep it, you know, decently similar. So kind of like that. And then I don't know why I had some tint on it. I don't really remember. And then I had a tiny bit of flicker. So. That's basically that, and so let's just um, preview it with all this stuff on there. Uh, last thing I wanted to say, um, I like to keep RSMB on the bottom of all the adjustment layers, just so um, like you don't want to be applying the RSMB to the effects. So you want to be putting it like at the bottom of the effects. Um, because if you're applying the RSMB to the other the other effect layers, uh, it does not look very good at all. So I like to keep it bottom. As you can see, I just put it on the bottom layer. <laughs> really easy. So with everything on it, this is how it looks. So obviously I'd want to switch up the color correction just to make it the theme of the edit, but for the time being, that's what it looks like. So I think it looks pretty good. And I feel like that's about it for what I had to explain on this. Um, if you guys need anything else uh, explained or anything like that, uh, let me know in the comments. Uh, maybe I'll make another video. I don't know. But I feel like this is like the basics of what Joanne everyone kind of needs. Is Just time remap. How to do say? some simple effects. How to... How? Render it properly and having a background layer, and you know. Uh, I think uh, I don't think I have to explain how to actually render it because I feel like that's pretty easy to do. You know, go to composition and you just add it to your render. It's not that big of a deal. So that's about it. Uh, if you guys want anything else, let me know. You can DM me on Twitter. Whatever. Appreciate everyone for watching and signing off.